and that's been hard. And last year was hard on Latin. You know, pro golf is really hard. And you have weeks where you're, you know, you never think you're going to play well again. And then you have weeks where you feel like you'll never miss a shot the rest of your life. And, you know, neither of those feelings are, are accurate. My name's Chris Whiter. I'm a professional golfer and we're here at Turtle Creek Club. Uh, I grew up in Woodbury, Connecticut which is a small town outside New York City. Grew up playing a lot of sports, played three sports through high school, and went to UConn to play golf. Finished up there, uh, came here in 2016, and turned professional, and been chasing PGA Tour ever since. I'm uh, 30 years old, just turned. Man, man, that sounded weird coming out, but. 30 years old, makes me feel kind of old. How old are you, Charlie? 24. 24. That just makes me smile. Oh man, UConn was amazing. Um, we had a good group of guys. I'm still very close with guys that were older than me and guys that were younger than me. You know, it was a, a good group of guys and a lot tried to play um, after school. So I had a lot of guys down here and in other parts of Florida, still keep in touch with those guys. I don't know, I picked up a club really young, but I, I didn't really start playing seriously until I was like 11 or 12. Uh, entered some, I think I entered my first tournament when I was 12. Uh, it was a nine hole tournament and I shot a 34. And I thought I was like Tiger Woods. So I got into the tournament the next week, shot a little 48. And I was like, yeah, this game is sick. Um, yeah, I've been playing professionally now for seven, almost seven years. So this is my seventh year. Um, and I've been all over the place and, you know, I, I'm used to the old Monday qualifiers. You know, I've been doing that this year. It's been an absolute grind. Um, you know, you show up and you shoot four or five under and you put your clubs in the car and you try to catch a last minute flight home. That route has been especially difficult for me this year just because I feel like I put a little bit too much pressure on the one round. Like you go out and play great on a Monday and shoot six, seven under, but that's not getting in most weeks out there. So it's hard to tell yourself that, you know, you're playing well, you go out and shoot four under. Any any day of the week you shoot four under and you're you're happy, but on Mondays, it's like an extra added pressure. You know, you just really can't make any mistakes. Particularly early in the year on the Corn Ferry Tour is, um, you know, can change your life because you can kind of get situated right at the top of that money list and, you know, reshuffle in and have a great year. Um, it depends kind of if you're playing, it depends which category you're playing out of. So with my, I didn't go to Corn Ferry Q School last year. I opted to go to Europe. And that ended up kind of screwing me over because I don't have any corn fairy status, so I have, I've got to go, you know, e even, even if I Monday in, I'm a non-member, which is a different category than, say, someone who made it to final stage and didn't get any starts. Um, they, if they were to go and Monday qualify and reshuffle in, they're basically set up for the year because they're already in that member category. Um, so it's difficult and it's hard because you're showing up to a qualifier with, you know, 156 players at two courses with eight spots. So you got 312 guys for eight spots, um, which sounds ludicrous, but like, you know, I've done it before. I've, I've Monday into Savannah, I've Monday into the PGA Tour event in Dominican. So, you know, the, the idea that like, it's a long shot is crazy. Cause I know if I just go out and play well, uh, you can get in. Pro golf's really hard. And you have weeks where you're, you know, you never think you're gonna play well again. And then you have weeks where you feel like you'll never miss a shot the rest of your life. And you know, neither of those feelings are, are accurate. So you just kind of need to take everything with a grain of salt. And if you don't have that self-belief that you can actually hang out there and you get inside the ropes with those guys and you feel like you belong, then uh, that's kind of the most important piece because ultimately we're just playing golf and you gotta be comfortable out there in a big setting. Uh, I got a little 102 back pin, kind of wet, wet ball, a little jumpy rough. So 
This ball should come out with a little less spin, maybe come, come out a little bit higher. But I'm landing into an upslope. I'm gonna play it right around 100. Hopefully land it at 100, one skip and stop. I leaked a little right, but that's the number. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the biggest thing that separates like a mini tour player from like a PGA tour player is the is the quality of the mistake. And I think when it comes to like the golf courses, like these golf courses, mini tour golf courses are softer, generally set up a little bit easier. That's why you get really good players out there and you know, they're going to shoot 25 under par because there's just not that big of a test. Once you get out on the PGA tour, you know, you get these firmer, faster, trickier tests. You know, the tour has gone to this runoff model. Um, a lot of courses have these runoffs all around the green and that's not, people are like, oh, isn't the fairway easier? They can just putt it, but it's not really the shot that makes it difficult. It's the indecision that it provides the player. So if you put me in a, in a shit lie with one option and I gotta go high with it, I'm probably gonna hit a pretty good shot because I know that that's my only option. But if I'm sitting there and I have an end of the grain lie and I, I could putt it and I could use a hybrid and I could go high with it and I could bump it. That indecision is what creates um, difficulty at the higher, highest levels. And so like that really wasn't that difficult of a shot, but I see it all the time that like guys will be kind of stuck between two options and they'll chunk it or they'll do something else. They'll hit a bad shot because they just, they never made a choice. I think people underestimate how much it really costs to play. Um, anyone who says that they can play pro golf for 30K in a year, they're probably not giving it 100%. They're not doing the Mondays, they're not doing the qualifiers. Going to Q school once a year and hanging out at home and going to the course every day isn't pro golf. Yeah, it's really expensive and you know, you have to have support from the people around you, whether it's your family or your sponsors or you know, your loved ones. It's, uh, it's extremely difficult. And you know, to say that money's not on your mind is crazy because it's it's really easy for like Rory and JT to sit there and say like oh I don't do this for the money but they got a hundred mil or more in the bank so like yeah of course they don't do it for the money but like for guys that are trying to pay their bills like it's hard not to let that creep in sometimes yeah I mean there's I've seen sponsorship agreements that people do um, where they have to pay a certain amount of their money back. You know, there's all different ways to write up those deals. You know, you can say that you're gonna take a, you know, $100,000 loan from someone with a 50% payback. And, you know, usually a lot of those things are, are from goodwill. Honestly, like investing in a golfer is like buying a lottery ticket. So um, the idea that you're gonna sell people that it's a good investment is kind of crazy because it, it's, it, it needs to kind of come from a place of goodwill and their, their want to be invested in your journey. You know, some of those guys, they might not care about the money, but don't lie to them tell, telling them that they're gonna get a big return. You know, it's more important for them to be a part of your journey and feel like they've got some, some skin in the game versus, you know, you telling them that they're gonna, you know, quadruple their investment in five years. Cause that's just, if they wanna do that, then I got a bond guy that you can, you can call. They have better options. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I do it just in my, because of my self-belief. Uh, I know that I can play out there at a very high level. I think that one day I'm gonna be in the top 50 in the world. Also, I'm, I'm kind of a realist though. Like I'm trying to run a business with this golf thing. So like you need to look and see like, am I getting better each year? Do I feel like I'm getting better at golf? And also, am I making more money? Or am I making more of these better opportunities as you play bigger and bigger events? And sometimes you're looking at stuff like, damn, why am I trying this? You know, you throw away 15, 20 grand in a bad stretch of golf and that's, you know, can kind of hurt your confidence. And I think it's easy when you're in your 20s to kind of be like a little bit um, naive to it and think that like, okay, I'm a failure if I don't get on the PGA Tour by the time that, you know, I, other guys your age might get on the PGA Tour. I'm not like a, you got to get up at 4.30, David Goggins the shit out of it. You know, you just need to take care of your business and be a good human and put out good stuff into the world and that's what you'll get back. There's no greater feeling than playing well in a tournament or actually, 
there's different scenarios in tournaments. Like if you, my first pro win, I was eight back going into the final round. Sonny Kim shot 60, I shot 68. And then I shot 64 and he shot 73 and I won by one. That was a great feeling. But it's a much better feeling when you're leading going into the final round. And then you show up and play well knowing that you have to, you know, it's not like, it can get a little bit uh, freeing to be chasing. You know, if you're in third or fourth or fifth in a tournament, you kind of go out, no expectation. I know if I play well, I'll be in good shape. But those thoughts of like, am I gonna win? What if this goes wrong if you're leading? And then coming out and overcoming that and playing well, that's by far the best feeling. In terms of if you're out there trying to, trying to do this for a living or you're thinking about doing it, um, I, I would say if you have all the right pieces in place, you got to go for it. Um, and make sure that uh, you know anything that you're doing in life, you're putting everything into, putting 100% in. Um, I, I think this whole player series is, is great because it, it's going to showcase um, what a lot of the normal struggles of like trying to make the tour are. Um, and you'll be able to kind of contrast that with guys who have had success out there because it's a different life. And you know, people, if I meet someone who's not really into golf and they ask me what I do and I say I'm a pro golfer, then they just assume that, you know, I'm hanging out with models and riding private jets and popping champagne. But, you know, the reality of it is that most pro golfers are sleeping in a shitty hotel, chasing, uh, you know, an almost impossible dream um, because of their self-belief. <laughs> Sweet, bro. That was fun. Yeah, man. That was great.